So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can use the Redux DevTools extension in your browser, whether that's Chrome or Firefox, to actually inspect the state of a Redux store that you've got running in your app. So we're going to take the example app that we did in the previous tutorial where we created a Redux store with the Redux Toolkit, and then we'll use the DevTools extension to actually inspect that state and see the actions that are being dispatched to the store and how they modify the state in case you need to debug anything. So let's take a look at the extension and see how it works. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need for this tutorial is to have some kind of React app that has a Redux store already set up, or if you're in the process of setting up one, you can use the tools that we're going to be using in this uh, tutorial uh, to actually uh, track and inspect your state uh, in your Redux store. So in order to inspect and take a look at the state in your Redux store, uh, you'll need to install a extension in your browser. So here I'm using Chrome. Uh, so in the Chrome uh, web store, you'll find the Redux dev tool. So you can just literally install that. And there are dev tools for other browsers such as Firefox as well. So go ahead and install the extension into your browser. That's the first step. And then as mentioned, you'll need your Redux app. I'm just using the uh, cat uh, upvoting app that we did in the previous tutorial, but any app with a Redux store that's set up should be fine. Uh, and that doesn't matter whether it's been created with the uh, standard Redux library or using the Redux toolkit like we used in the previous tutorial. That being said, if you are just using the standard Redux library, you'll need to add a little bit of code into your app. And if you have a look at the uh, extension uh, documentation, so this is for any browser that you're using, you'll need to just add this line uh, into where you're creating the store, just so the Redux DevTool extension can find the store and, and make the connection between those two things. But if you're using the Redux Toolkit, as we are in this app, then there's no need to actually add this line in because it's done automatically for you. Okay, so back over in our app, uh, what we can do now is just open up our developer tools and you should find you've got a new tab uh, for Redux. And what I'm going to do is just give you a bit of an overview of what you can use this tool for uh, and how you can use it to inspect and manage the state in your app based on what is stored in your Redux store. So what happened in our app when we made it, we had a, an initial action to actually go and get uh, some cat data from an API and then put it in our store. So you can see here, that's the initial action that's been called here, which is just cats forward slash set cats. So if you go and find that in our code, uh, you can see uh, in the cat list uh, component, that was the first thing that happens when the component loads. Uh, we load the data from this uh, cat API and then basically send dispatch the uh, action from here, the set cats action, and then pass in the data as the payload um, for our Redux store to manage in its state. And you can see exactly that happening here. Here's the action and here is the information that's being put into the store. So essentially we've got a list of IDs and the upvotes property for each ID uh, for each object in the store is set as zero. So that's quite handy in itself because you can kind of debug the data that's been put into your store without having to run any debuggers in VS Code or within your uh, web browser itself. And so all of the actions that are dispatched to the Redux store will show up in this inspector panel here. So let's dispatch a few more actions. So we had the upvoting uh, for each of the cat images. So if I click this button a few times, you can see that we get the actions populated into the inspector here. And again, we can click on one of those to actually examine what the state actually is. So here you can see the state being updated for the first item in the cats array uh, and the upvotes is incrementing each time. So another cool thing that you can do with the Redux tools is actually rewind time. Uh, and using the slider and these buttons on the bottom of the panel, you can actually reverse any of the actions that have been sent to the Redux store. So for example, if I click the back arrow to go back one, you can see that the upvoting for this particular cat has reversed to three, uh, and that payload from this particular action here has been removed from the Redux store for now. And of course, you can use this slider to go back and forth as well. So we can go back and remove the other two upvotes as well. So we've only got one upvote remaining, so it's just this final action here. And of course, you can rewind all the way to the beginning of when the store was created, and that will give us a blank page because at that point, the first action hasn't been dispatched and we have no data in the app to actually show any of the cats. But if we fast forward to the next step, that set cats action will have been dispatched and all of the 
cat data is available to display. So that's probably the main thing that you're going to use the Redux dev tools for. So there are some other options here for uh, configuring how the panel displays on the bottom here, uh, but probably the most useful thing that you've got is to be able to import and export any of the data from uh, your Redux panel here. So for example, you can export a JSON file that has all of the actions uh, to update the state for a particular app. So that might be handy if you're debugging with colleagues and you can send them the exact actions that you've done to recreate create a problem with the app, for example. And the other thing that might be worth taking a look at as well is to actually go over to the chart to give you a bit of a graphical overview of the state that's currently stored in your Redux store. And for our example, it's fairly simple. We've just got this one slice of cats that has this array. But if your app is a bit more complex, then obviously this might be handy to work out where all of the state is stored in a particular app. So if you do actually want to turn off the Redux data sharing between your app and the extension, then you can disable it simply by removing this line if you're using the standard Redux library. If you're using the Redux toolkit, then it's pretty simple as well. All you do when you're configuring your store is you can set the DevTools property to be false. And when we reload the app, you should find that none of that state is found. Uh, there's no store found uh, for the Redux DevTools extension to find. So you might want to do that in production if you want to keep things tidy. So that's just a short overview of the Redux DevTools extension and how you can use it to inspect the state of a Redux store that you've got running in your app. And what we've looked at are the essential things that you'll need to use it for in terms of inspecting the state of a Redux app and also by using it to debug problems by going through the sequence of actions that have been applied to the store when a particular issue occurs. So that's it for this tutorial. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. And thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.